everyone and welcome it's Mindy with Mindy Egan Design and today I'm going to be showing you a card that I created using the reveal wheel and creating a beautiful sunset background for this. So typically what I like to do when I'm creating an interactive card like this is I like to make a mock-up. So I just grab some scrap papers to put it together so I have an idea of how the card is going to go together and then I just kind of set that off on the side to reference. So that is what I did for this one and I decided I wanted to do my ink blending first. I wanted to get all of that out of the way before I start die cutting anything. So here I'm going to be using the Bristol Smooth cardstock which is really great for ink blending whether you're using reg regular distressed inks or the oxides. And I'm bringing in the first one I brought in was the Fired Brick and I did a little bit at the top and then I'm blending down with candied apple, spiced marmalade and fossilized amber. And these are all the Distress Oxide inks. And I just add a little strip as I go down the card to create that sunset background. And then I'll go back up and smooth out those lines so I have a really nice seamless blend between all of them. And I did decide to come in with a little bit more of the red just to kind of bring out some of that richness of the background. And just finishing off, blending that in a little bit more. That way I don't have any harsh lines between the colors. Once I have that piece done, I'll set that off on the side and I'm going to work on a piece of cardstock for my waves. So I wanted some really nice, bright, summery colors for this. I started with the Cracked Pistachio and blended that out with the Mermaid Lagoon. This is also using the Bristol Smooth cardstock. And just quickly going over those colors, bringing that Mermaid Lagoon up into the Cracked Pistachio. So I have that seamless blend going on again. Then I can take the top off of my Distress Sprayer and sprinkle some water onto that and dab that up with a paper towel so that gives me those water droplet effects. Then I can bring in my stitched waves border uh, die and just kind of line that up where I want it to go and die cut that out and I can trim this piece down later. Then I'll bring in the reveal wheel die. So I'm lining this up on my sunset background here and I'll bring in my sentiment die piece and hold that down with some post-it tape and then I can run this through my die cutting machine and that'll create my front panel which is what I'm going to really be working on decorating and layering up. Then I can just remove that post-it tape and I'll have my front panel ready for decorating. Now what I also did is that little sentiment strip there cut out a piece and I'm going to use that to die cut my arrow from too. That way my it, everything is consistent. It matches the colors that I used for the background and I'll have that arrow ready for later to add onto the card so my recipient knows to spin the wheel. And I'll also just put that off on the side while I work on the rest of my card. To create the sun I use the stitched circle with some sunflower cardstock. I thought that was a beautiful match to my sunset background. And then I also created the background panel out of white, my reveal wheel, and that reveal wheel base out of white. So I put the base behind that main reveal wheel part. The score lines are facing out. And then I can push my brad through and open that up to get those two attached. And I'll go ahead and add some foam squares around that small reveal wheel base part. And I don't want those foam squares touching my brad because I want this to move nicely once my card is all attached. And I can bring in my front panel. And it's hard to see on camera, but there are those score lines there. So I'm just going to make sure that those score lines are not visible. So on the side, I'll scooch that in a little bit and up. And I just kind of finagle with it a little bit, making sure I still have plenty of room on the side to spin my wheel, but those score lines won't be showing. Once I have that where I want it, 
I'll bring in that back panel, line up my edges, and I can push down to adhere those foam squares. So my mechanism will be exactly where I need it to be. Now I need to make some marks where I want my sentiments to go, so I'm just going to put those tick marks in the corners of my wheel. I'll line those up on that right hand tab and then I can pencil in where that sentiment window is going to be. That way I know exactly where I need to stamp those sentiments. So I'll spin that off on the side till I see my little tick mark on the right hand side and then pencil in that sentiment window and I'll do that for all four spots. And then I could come in and erase these lines later. I'm doing it light enough so it's not going to show anything. Now I can take my reveal wheel off and get ready for stamping. I personally like to use the Misty tool because I don't trust myself using a block. I want to make sure that everything is stamped really nice. I'm going to use the reveal wheel sentiment stamp set and I picked out four fun messages to go with my main saying. My card is going to say hope your day is and then I can just add different sayings throughout it. And I'll use the Lawn Fawn Black ink. And I like to stamp mine twice just to have that really nice clean impression. And then just spin my wheel and can you continue stamping throughout those sentiment windows that I penciled in. So we have awesome and fabulous, amazing, and magical. These reveal wheels are so much fun to put together and once you do one of them they really do go quick. That I could come in and just erase those pencil marks. I also like to take a Swiffer cloth and just dust off all of those particles from my eraser. I can go ahead and attach this back onto my reveal wheel base. And my mechanism is ready. Spins really nice, so I like to test those out. Make sure it's moving smoothly. Now that my ink blended background is nice and dry, I'm going to start working on the stamping for the front of this. You do want to make sure it's dry, otherwise your embossing powder, if you're doing embossing, is going to stick to places you don't want it to. I'm going to be prepping this with an anti-static powder tool just to remove any static or any oily spots that my fingers might have left. And then using the Misty tool again, I'm going to bring in that main sentiment piece. So hope your day is lining that up where I wanted to go kind of centered above my sentiment window. And then I can ink that up with some Versamark ink. This is just a really nice sticky ink. So it's great for embossing. And I can just lightly press down onto my panel Sprinkle on some black embossing powder, making sure it's not stuck to anywhere I don't want it to, and then I can heat that up. And it's going to be just a really nice shiny sentiment on my card that just kind of sticks out, which is what I wanted to do. Now I also have this Life is Good stamp set, and on it, it has these two silhouette of birds, and I thought they were perfect for this sunset panel that I'm creating. And there's two different sizes. So what I'll do is bring in my pieces I've already die cut. And here um, I did off screen cut a beach area and that is using paper bag cardstock with the stitched hillside border die. And I trimmed everything down on how it's gonna fit on this front panel. So I just go ahead and line all of that up because I wanna make sure I'm not covering up my birds once I have them all done. And then I can go ahead and use the Versamark ink again and stamp those down. And bringing in the black embossing powder. And then I do also, I sprinkle this off on the paper and then off camera, I like to give it a good wrap on my desk to make sure that nothing is stuck. And I can heat emboss those. And I wanted to have one more little bird on there, getting in the groups of three. Now bring back in those pieces. And this littlest one, 
fits just perfect in that little nook and cranny between the sentiment window and the tab on the side. So that just worked out perfectly. And then I can heat emboss that too. Now there are plenty of stamp sets that would have worked great for the sunset background. You could have left the beach off and just used the waves and you could have an ocean scene. I decided to use these really cute palm trees off of the Life is Good stamp set. So I stamped two of them and I'm going to do some really simple basic Copic coloring on here. I'm using the YG25 and just laying down that main layer of color and I'll come in with the YG17 and I'm just adding a small section on the bottom portion of the leaves. And that's all I'm really doing on those leaves. I'm not blending them out. That's enough of a shadow. They're just, they're a perfect size image to do some simple coloring and still add dimension and depth to the image. I had a little bit go out of my lines, so I just came in with the colorless blender and pushed that back in. For the trunk of the palm trees, I'm coming in with the E34 laying down a base of color and then I'll also come in with the darkest color which is the E59 and I'm just adding a line under each of those sections of the palm tree and I'll also bring in an E57 to kind of soften up that darkest color so I still have that depth in those trees but I didn't put a lot of effort into blending them and I think they just came out perfect for this there is also a coordinating die set for this. There is only one palm tree die, so I will attach this to my card and run this through cutting out the first palm tree. And then I'll come back in and die cut the second one. So I'll have my two palm trees ready for my front panel. And I hold those down just using some low tack post-it tape. This is great because it does not rip my paper, but it holds everything where I need it to go. And now I have all of my elements ready for the front panel of my card to start decorating. I'll start off lining up my images where I need them to go. And my sun is going to go in the background, so that's going to be the first thing that I adhere down, just making sure I'm not covering up my embossed birds. And then bringing in the ocean waves. I love how this blue stands out from that sunset background. That just worked out perfect. Then I can come in with my sand and attach that down at the bottom. And I'll go ahead and get these palm trees attached. And I like to use my tweezers when I'm attaching small images. That just helps keeps my fingers out of the way so I can really line up where I want them, kind of centered underneath that sentiment strip at the top. So just little bits of tape. You could also run these through a sticker maker or using the liquid glue, any type of adhesive would work for this. And then just rubbing over my Swiffer cloth to take off any of the powder that I'd used from the anti-static powder bag. And we are ready to start putting this front panel together. So I went ahead and added the foam tape around my reveal wheel mechanism. That way there's still room to move. And just pushing that down really well, making sure this is Stuck together good, testing that out, making sure my wheel is spinning. And I can go ahead and attach this to a white card base. And this is measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. And now I can just get that lined up on that white card base. And we'll have this almost ready to go. And you'll be able to see here when I bring it up close, those birds. I love how they're embossed in the sentiment. It's really nice and shiny. I have some nice dimension. And my last finishing touch is just adding that little arrow off on the side of my wheel so my recipient knows to spin the wheel. And that will finish up the card. So I just test out my wheel and I have all these really fun sentiments. I have given some of these cards to teachers and they absolutely love them. So I really hope you enjoyed my card today and creating this beautiful sunset background. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.